Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Up to nine people have been killed by a massive storm which lashed France and Italy. Nature contains unparalleled power which can bring life and also bring disaster. That's right, a storm just hit the city of love, Paris, France. The storm hit Paris with terrifying force, bringing fierce winds and torrential rain, causing heavy damage to the country and its people. What happened? Where do storms come from? Is this a special sign? In this episode, I will explain in more detail. Smash that thumbs up button for me, leave me a comment down below, and share this video with your friends. And let's get started. Paris, the capital of France, is one of the most important and influential cities in the world. It used to have the fourth largest population in the European Union, and Paris is the second most visited city in Europe after London, England. Well, we can call Paris by another name, the City of Light. Torrential rains have battered Paris following a recent heatwave that inundated the French capital's metro stations. A month's worth of precipitation fell in one hour. The journalist was on a bus in southern Paris when water spilled through the doors and reached the passengers' feet. Oh, scary. A tornado. The meteorological station atop the Eiffel Tower recorded wind speeds of up to 104 km per hour. Meteorological authorities stated that heavy rain caused the Seine to rise by 35 cm. The Paris Fire Service issued a warning to area people, directing them on how to be safe during the rain and urging them to stay at home. Such heavy rain and constant storms, is it a sign from God? Is that the wrath of God? After human ancestors Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, sin quickly spread throughout the human race. The consequence of sin is death. Humanity became more wicked and evil. So much so that God had to destroy humanity with a flood. After that, humans continue to sin until today. Humanity's wickedness is becoming more and more sophisticated, just as the prophet Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and very evil. However, God's word reveals to us that humanity will face a great tribulation unprecedented in human history. There are three Bible verses confirming the following unprecedented great tribulation. The Bible uses a special expression, the wrath of God, or, the anger of God, to refer to the unique great tribulation. This shows that the agent who causes the great tribulation comes from God. God himself will bring great tribulation on the human world. The expression, the wrath of God, appears many times in both the Old and New Testaments. In addition, the Old Testament also uses, anger, storm, jealousy, all have the same meaning as, wrath. Please quote a few sentences, therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth be shaken from its place, because of the wrath of the Lord, the Lord of hosts will be angry on the day of his anger. Behold the storm of the Lord, even his anger, has broken out, a great storm, it will break out on the head of the wicked. Who can stand before his wrath? Who can withstand his anger? His anger is poured out like fire, the rocks were broken by him. That I may pour out my anger and my anger upon them, for the whole earth shall be devoured by the fire of my jealousy. Behold, the anger of the Lord has gone forth like a storm, like a whirlwind, on the head of the wicked. When reading the history of the Israelites, every time they sinned, God became angry and punished them. God's wrath in those cases has a general meaning because God is holy. God's anger reveals his holy and just nature in the face of disobedience and rebellion. God of man, the general meaning of God's wrath is found in Exodus 32 verse 10, Numbers 11 colon 1, Deuteronomy 9 verse 8, Joshua 9 verse 20, Judges 2 verses 14 and 1 Samuel 6 colon 7, 2 Kings 13 verse 3, Ezra 8 verse 22, Nehemiah 13 verse 18, etc. However, the expression, the wrath of God, has a special meaning. It is a prophecy of the wrath of the last days, the wrath that John the Baptist warned the Pharisees about, and the Sadducees when they came to him to be baptized. So John said to the people who came to be baptized by him, you generation of vipers, 
who taught you? Will you escape the wrath of the future? The prophetic books repeatedly mention the wrath of the last days in the New Testament because it was written during the period of grace. Wrath often has a special meaning, only a few verses have a general meaning. When we study the Bible context, we will be able to distinguish them, avoiding the great tribulation means avoiding God's wrath. God provides humans with a solution to avoid His wrath. The solution is faith in Jesus. Believing in Jesus is the only way to receive immediate salvation. If the believer is still alive when Jesus returns, his body will be transformed, and God will take him away from this world to be with God forever. Thus, believing in Jesus is a sure guarantee of avoiding the great tribulation or wrath. For those who refuse the salvation of Jesus, there are two situations as follows. If that person dies before Jesus comes to receive the church, that person will not receive eternal life because he is still under God's wrath. Says whoever believes in the Son, Jesus, has eternal life, whoever does not believe in the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. He will make a lasting covenant with many people for one week, and in the middle of the week, he will bring wealth. The feast and the grain offering ceased. The destroyer will come with hideous wings, and there will be fury on the desolate place until the time of the end, which is appointed. After sixty-nine weeks, the Jews plotted to capture Jesus to the Roman government so they could crucify Jesus. The event of Jesus' death on the cross ended the period of law and also ended the first sixty-nine weeks, ushering in the period of grace. Thus, the seventieth week paused until God wanted it to begin. Between the 69th week and the 70th week is the period of grace we are living in. This period, when the period of grace ends, the 70th week begins. Jesus will come to take the church out of this world before the 70th week begins. Thus, the great tribulation is in the 70th week, which is also the last week. Most people love to hear God talk about his salvation and how he saves people through his signs, wonders, and wonders. But when it comes to his judgment, they leave or have the tendency to rely on one's own imagination of his image in how they perceive him, want to worship or get to know him. One of the best lessons from God describing his judgment and salvation recorded by God through his Holy Spirit to others is in Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, Sai, who recorded it through the Holy Spirit given by God, and it was passed down from generation to generation. Judgment then salvation, I have revealed myself to those who did not ask me, I was found by people who weren't looking for me. To a nation that does not call my name, I say, here I am, here I am. All day long, I have raised my hand to welcome intolerant people following bad paths, pursuing their own imaginations, people who always provoke me right in the face. Most people will react quickly and say, but that's the Old Testament, and think that's not the God of the New Testament. That is not true, he never changes who he is. But how we know him through his Holy Spirit is the only change for all of humanity. The New Testament is carried out through his Holy Spirit through his Son Jesus Christ, his Holy Son in the New Testament. In Isaiah 64, Isaiah asks God the same question that was asked of Jesus in the New Testament, he comes to help those who cheerfully do what is right, remembering his ways. But when we continued to sin with them, you became angry. Then how can we be saved? Then God answered in Isaiah 65 the same meaning meaning of Isaiah was heard by Jesus in Luke 13 verse 24 when someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? Jesus was recorded by Luke through the same Holy Spirit that Isaiah was recorded with the message of judgment and salvation is the same. Listen to God's word and go through the narrow door, don't follow your imagination, but go through the wide door, make every effort to enter through the narrow gate, for many I tell you will try to enter and will not be able. There are three judgments of God upon his first chosen people, the Israelites, clearly recorded by Isaiah at the beginning of Isaiah 65. Stretch out a helping hand to the wayward people. They are stubborn and stubborn in resisting God even though he always teaches them how to worship him in truth and reaches out to help them. They still do not listen to him, they continue to ignore him, his word, and his truth. 
He sent prophet after prophet to warn them, but they still ignored his instructions and the truth he gave his prophets to speak. The Holy Spirit records the same message through Paul in the New Testament in his letter to the Romans about some obstinate Jews, God said they followed a bad path, following their own imagination. God wants us to use our imagination, he gives them to us because his purpose is to create useful things that will make our lives richer and better lived without suffering unnecessarily. All things on earth should be used for his purposes and glory, and our imaginations used for the common good of all, not for evil or for our own glory. We, another part of our imagination that we don't use, is to get to know him and how to worship him. We have all been taught about God through his Holy Spirit, and his word confirms all that we have been taught. We should never add to his words with our imagination or take away any of his words to suit our own imagination and lifestyle. He said people who lived like these types of people were like smoke going into his nose. As for me, I don't want smoke in my father's nostrils, and I don't want anyone else in my father's nostrils with smoke either. The same thing happened to me as it did to Isaiah, Paul, Jesus, and all who followed him. There are three more judgments recorded in Isaiah 65 for Israel recorded in Isaiah 65 verses 1 to 11. But as for those who forsake the Lord, forget my holy mountain, set up tables for good fortune, and fill bowls of wine mixed with fate. I will appoint you to hold sword, and all ye shall stoop to slaughter, for I called, but you did not answer, I spoke, but you did not listen, you did evil in my sight and chose what displeased me. For those who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, his holy mountain today is those who worship his truth and his Holy Spirit wherever they are. So don't give up on him by not listening to him and following his spirit and truth today, those are the only worshippers he seeks, Jesus declared, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know, we worship what we know, that we may be saved. However, the time is coming when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the worshippers whom the Father seeks. Worshippers must worship in spirit and truth. You are the one who sets the table to find luck. We should not set the table with food or material possessions to show that we are lucky, but to show that we are grateful and share our table with others. Many people today like to show off how lucky they are with all the food they have, eat and where they go to get what they eat. Look at me and what I have, and if you follow me, you can also have what I have. All this type of mentality and actions do not come from God. You are the one who filled the bowl of mixed wine for Duane, although I've been told that mixing white and red wine doesn't taste good or fresh with the old. Jesus uses this analogy as an example of God's old covenant through the law not harmonizing well with the new covenant given by God through his Spirit. By following the Spirit and being faithful, fulfilled daily by carrying his cross, fulfilling the old covenant through God's miracles road. Another thing he said does not mix well is our flesh with his spirit. He said that our flesh must be faithfully crucified before his spirit can work fully through us. Faithfully, he also gives us another example of darkness and light not being in harmony with each other, meaning that the ways of Satan and God are not in harmony with each other. Another formula or marriage that does not mix well is the world's ways and God's ways. Another way that doesn't combine well is to use all kinds of wisdom from human and God formation and mix it all together. He wants us to seek only Him and His ways for our destiny, and if we fail to do so, His judgment will be proven by the outcome of our lives and souls. Revelation 11 verse 2, As for the outer court of the temple, leave it outside. Do not measure it, for that place has been given to the Gentiles, and they will trample on the holy city for forty-two months. That is God's part of judgment, not to make our lives worse but to save us from everything He knows will harm us. We have not yet resolved the answer who will be saved. We have all the answers to the question of who wants to be saved, but who will be saved? It is really simple and not difficult because He has given us everything to know and trust Him. In the past, when we look back at the history of his chosen people, and he still gives us all what we need through his Holy Spirit of truth. 
It is also used for the district located between the mountains of central Palestine and the Mediterranean Sea and north of Joppa. Daniel 7 verse 25, He will speak blasphemy against the Most High and will waste away the saints of the Most High and will intend to change times and laws. The saints will be delivered into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.